All right, welcome back to the channel. So Jerron Ennis puts Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford, Crawford on notice that he is going to be undisputed at 147, 154, and 160, and that a matchup between him and Errol Spence Jr. is imminent. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. So you guys, that if you're familiar with this channel, you know that I'm very, very high on Jerron Boots Ennis out of the city of Philadelphia, the great state of Pennsylvania, where they have an absolutely terrific, terrific boxing history. You have a whole bunch of fighters like Bernard Hopkins, Danny Garcia, other great fighters that have come out. I know that that is doing a... Uh, I, I do believe also Joe Frazier fought out of Philadelphia, although he's from South Carolina, but just a really, really great tradition of boxing in the city of Philadelphia. And Jerron Ennis is one of the latest guys to come out of there. And I think that he may just be the best guy at 147, 154, and 160 that we've seen in a long time, provided that he has a chin to hold up behind, you know, to hold up if somebody gets through all of the other weapons that he has. Um, I so he has a fight coming up soon against Jerron Ennis. I, I mean, excuse me, against Sergey Lipinis. I do believe that's in about a week and a half or so. And this will be the second very big step up fight for uh, Jerron Ennis. The first one was with a guy named Chris Van Heerden, a former opponent of Errol Spence Jr., who was a good, solid welterweight who Jerron Ennis absolutely ran through, ran through him a little too fast and gave, uh, gave. Van Herden a little bit of an out by allowing him to jump off the ropes and bash his head into Jerron Ennis's and the fight would stop on a cut. But if you watch that fight, you could see that Jerron Ennis, that Jerron Ennis was going to get uh, Chris Van Herden out of there in, a round, in what, three rounds tops he was going to get out of there. It was going to be an absolute massacre. Um, the fight ended kind of humdrum, but for anybody that watched it, you saw this guy's skill. You know, he's a very, very natural fighter. He also, because he learned how to fight in, you know, with his father from a very young age. He's got older brothers that are fighters, right? Supremely skilled offensively and defensively. Pretty much everything that you want to have in a fighter, I think you have with Jerron Ennis, with the with the possible exception, and this is only possible. I've not seen it happen. So, but you know, I'm very wary because you know guys like um, Sir Marcus Brown, right, was also somebody that looked to be very, very skilled, although not as skilled as Jerron Ennis. But we find in the fight with Jean Pascal that he can't take these looping overhand rights that just kept landing and kept landing. So aside from that, though, I think Jerron Ennis is absolutely positively the truth. He'll be facing um, um, Sergey Lipinitz next. Sergey Lipinitz is the former 140-pound champion, and he's also, I, I think, a top 10, uh, a t right, right around a top 10 welterweight and I think what you'll see with Jerron Ennis is that Jerron Ennis is probably going to run through Sergey Lipinitz. And I see the fight going uh, kind of like this. Uh, Sergey Lipinitz more than likely is going to come out aggressive, is going to try to come forward and walk Jerron Ennis down. Jerron Ennis is probably going to spend a couple couple rounds, you know, maybe the first round feeling him out. Second uh, second round, third round, he's going to wind up starting to pot shot him, right? As Sergey Lipinitz is coming in, he's going to be hitting him with straight rights. He's going to be hitting him with lead. Uh, I think he's going to hit Sergey Lipinitz with lead uppercuts, pretty much whatever he wants to hit him with. And then eventually, as soon as Sergey Lipinitz starts moving backwards, um, then you're going to see Jerron in a step towards him and I think you're going to see him run through the smaller man. Sergey Lipinitz is a is a is a durable fighter. He's a very very skilled fighter although he doesn't have a lot of fights on his record. He is still very very skilled. It's a little bit of a misnomer because he's had a lot of fights in the ring as a kickboxer. But that said, he, in my opinion, is a stepping stone for Jerron Ennis, but a very, very solid one because if you look at, like, the competition, say, that a Terrence Crawford has had at 147, uh, there's an argument that 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 um, Sergey Lipinitz is as good as anybody Terrence Crawford has fought at 147 pounds. So 
I think that this is a very, very good um, fight for Jerron Ennis and one where he should really come out, come out looking spectacular. Now, in an interview that took place on, I saw it on Fight Hype. Uh, you know how they replay interviews that may be filmed somewhere else and like a PBC interview or something like that. And they may then, you know, put it on Fight Hype or Fight Hub. But so I, I believe I saw the interview on Fight Hype. And Jerron Ennis was asked about Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, and who he wanted to fight next. And Jerron Ennis had a very, very practical, very practical answer for it. I really, uh, I thought that it is about as accurate as you can get. He said that right now he believes that he is ready and can beat anybody at 147 pounds. It doesn't matter. It could be Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, Sean Porter, Keith Thurman. Doesn't matter. Jerron Ennis thinks right now that he is already where he needs to be in order to beat these guys. Um, but that he and that his goal is to unify at 147 pounds and that he's not moving up until he unifies at 147. Then he said that he believes that he can go all the way. He can easily go and do the same thing at 154, and he feels confident that his weight and his size will cover, will carry him all the way to the middleweight division where he'll be able to dominate in the, in the middleweight division. He gets a little more. Then he gets a little practical with 168 and says, well, I don't quite know about 168 if, I can, if I'm big enough to really compete in 168, but feels very confident through three solid weight, through three, um, solid weight classes. Now he says that he's ready for Spence, uh, that he's ready for Spence and these guys right now. Um, the problem with that is going to be that that fight, and this is something that he acknowledges more than likely the fight is not going to take place at 147 pounds that he doesn't believe that he'll be able to get to Terrence Crawford or Errol Spence jr. Until 100 until they're at 154 pounds. Now, why would that be? A great insight from the young man. It's going to be a matter of timing. Uh, in the in, in the case of Errol Spence Jr., Errol Spence already has a clear, pretty much a clear plat, path to undisputed. His next fight, hopefully, should be with your Danis Ugas, who is the WBA champion, WBA super champion. If Errol Spence Jr. fights him and is able to beat him next, Errol Spence will then have three of the belts, and the only belt left after that would be. Uh, Terrence Crawford for the WBO and unification. So I do believe, though, that that would take at least two fights to get to uh, for Errol Spence. So there's at least three more fights in the welterweight division for Errol Spence. And if you see how that works, that's that would be two fights this year and one fight next year. And then more than likely, he's going to be out of the division going to 154 or looking for a fight um, with Canelo at 160. So it doesn't seem that Errol Spence Jr. is going to be there for him to fight at 147. Same thing would go would hold true for Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford has, I do believe, his next fight he's looking at is Jose Cito Lopez, and then there's the talk. There's already talks of him and Virgil Ortiz, but hopefully, what will happen is that he will kind of come to his. I wouldn't say come to his senses, but that at the end of this, he would negotiate with Terrence Crawford a reasonable pay or reasonable agreement for them to have their for that for them to have their fight for undisputed. So I don't think I think that Jerron Ennis is being very practical in this regard and saying that probably not at 147 pounds, but at 154 pounds, he thinks he'll be right there and in, uh, right there and in the running. And I think that that might be about a year and a half, maybe two more fights. Um, well, man, it's going to take more than, than that to unify for, for Jerron Ennis. It's going to actually take for Errol Spence and those guys to leave the division and for those belts to be up for grabs. Now, there definitely is going to be a hurdle to, um, to Jerron Ennis becoming undisputed at 147, and I think that that is a guy named uh, Virgil Ortiz. There's a lot of talk about Virgil Ortiz being, you know, ready to fight these top-level welterweights, similar to Jerron Ennis. Um, but if Virgil Ortiz gets his hands on a belt at 147, which more than likely would be that WBO belt, I think it would be difficult to get uh, Golden Boy to agree to have him fight Jerron Ennis. Because in my opinion, I think Jerron Ennis is just a higher-level fighter than Virgil Ortiz and that he'll win that fight. And you kind of know how the politics go from there. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section. Is Jerron Ennis ready for Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford? What do you think about the Sergey Lipinus fight? Let me know in, this, in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.